Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 26 brings many new features and changes with a new redesign across the OS. This time around, I thought we'd go over everything new in notes and reminders. Now, if we go into notes, you'll see it mainly looks the same as it did before. Of course, we have our previous seven days, but you'll notice that the search bar is now at the bottom. If I scroll down, you'll see that it's translucent. And if I switch over maybe to light mode, you can see this a little bit better where there's some translucency and sort of a glass effect as I scroll between different things. So that's something that's been updated. Of course, we have our speech button here or our microphone. We can create a new note. And then in the upper right, we have a menu. So if we go into the menu, you, you'll see we can view this as a gallery, select notes and view attachments. So it's just sort of a new take. We have some new animations throughout and it looks a little bit different. If we switch back to dark mode and maybe we go back to where our folder view is, you'll see again, this looks a little bit different. Search is still at the bottom. And then again, we have the option to create something new, create a new folder or go into a folder altogether. If we go into a new note, tap here, maybe to fill in some more information or something new, whether that's a table or something else, you'll see that the menu is actually scrollable. Now, wherever I tap, it highlights and it's scrollable with all different options. So this is something that's been updated. You'll see, as I move my finger over the top, if I don't press, it sort of highlights where I am. We have the new keyboard that's here as well. Again, that's sort of hard to see under dark mode, but it curves around the edges. Again, everything has that liquid glass design. And if this was filled in with text, you would see it behind there. Again, we have menus in the upper right with a little checkbox here and some other options as well. So this is something that's a little bit different. Again, more animations and an overall design change altogether. Something that's been updated is when you go to select text. So if I press and hold it, you'll see that you can move your finger around and we have this liquid glass design. We can see very easily what we're hovering over and what we're selecting. And then if we move quickly, you'll see it animates and moves back and forth. Again, if I switch to dark mode, you'll see the difference here as I scroll back and forth. So it looks pretty good. It's a nice design and it's very easy to see. Another thing when we select is if we press and hold and select, we can swipe through. And again, you'll see that highlight here. So again, very nice to maybe select something. And then we have options such as Apple intelligence, cut, copy, paste, and then you have your writing tools. If you have an Apple intelligence supporting device. So again, some nice little updates there. One thing that notes gains with this update is the option to use Markdown. Now you can't write Markdown within notes itself, but you can export it. So if we go to export, you'll see export as Markdown. You can even import as Markdown as well. So if you go to export, you can export it as Markdown. It will create that. And then you can share it with someone else via messages. You can airdrop it, put it in free form, send it via email or use another app or save it to files and then even use some of the things as a ringtone. However, I'm not sure you'd want to use Markdown as a ringtone. If we go back one, you'll see that we have a bunch of notes here. And if I go into this note in particular, you'll see that there's a graph here. If I paste in something that can be graphed, it will then give you the option to insert a graph and then you can rotate it and then view it a little bit differently. So we can expand it. We can rotate it, take a look at it. And it's based on whatever you're pasting in here. So if you just paste in this, you of course can change variables and you'll see that it changes based on what we're typing. So again, it's changing based on whatever you're typing in here that it solves for and then graphs. So this is a nice little update. Again, as we press and hold, we can move things around and there's the graph itself. With iOS 26 notes does not have a ton of changes this time around, other than the redesign that I've shown you already, but Apple has added it to watch OS 26. So if you have a device running watch OS 26, you'll now see the notes app and within notes, you'll see all of your notes synced across devices. So you can see what we have here is present on the iPhone and they sync across devices, which is just very handy to go into. Maybe you want to create a new note. You can do that using the keyboard or your voice and just maybe make a note for yourself and again, have them sync across devices. Now reminders has some updates as well. Reminders get some really nice updates. As far as the look, the first thing is they've added color to it. So you can see the different colors we have here for today and scheduled. So we have blue for today, red for scheduled, all is black or sort of a gray flagged as a yellow or orange completed is gray. And then work is also a reddish color. And we also have Siri suggestions. So we have this liquid glass design here as well. However, it's not as 
prominent as it is on other devices. If we go to search, for example, you'll see that it's not completely see-through as we scroll through. Now it is translucent a little bit or transparent just a little bit. So the design is definitely there. Again, if we switch back to light mode, you can see some of that here, especially on the keyboard. So there is that liquid glass design, but it doesn't seem to be as in your face as maybe in notes or other places in the operating system. So again, the same colors are here. We have the redesign where we have a different menu in the upper right. We have the option to add a reminder, and then we can go in and you'll see edit lists and templates again with that new animation. So things just sort of pop in. They're a little bit bouncy and it shows you what it can do. If we go to add a reminder, you'll see here that the interface again, looks a little bit different. We have a similar toolbar with liquid glass. And then of course, all the things we're familiar with. Now you'll see that we have Siri suggestions. This is something that if you have Apple intelligence, if we go into it, you'll see it suggests something based on what's found in messages. So maybe a dentist appointment. It's something I had to reschedule, which I already did, but this is just a suggestion and it suggests things based on information found in messages and mail that can be turned off, but it recognizes possible events and then suggests them to reminders. So again, this is done on device. It's not shared with Apple and Apple has said the feature can show up for tasks, grocery items, text, and even following up on email. So that's a nice little update. So you can just add it simply if you want to, and then it will add it into your reminders. Another thing you'll see is if we go into a list here, we now have the option to automatically categorize what's here. If we go to the three dot menu, you'll see that we now have an Apple intelligence option for auto categorize. It will take a moment sort of highlighting it to let you know that it's thinking and it takes a moment and now it's broken into different sections. So we have electronics and connectivity, miscellaneous items, photography equipment. So whatever you put in here, maybe you just want to make a list that has a bunch of things. This will auto categorize it for you. If you want to, if you don't like it, turn it off and it can remove all of the categories and they go away. Sometimes if you add a few different things, it will categorize them a different way as well. Then you have all of your different options for manual sorting, due date, creation date, priority, and others. So it's a nice little update here where you can quickly categorize things. I think it's very helpful if you have a lot of long lists. And then one other thing for reminders has to do with the control center. You'll see that we have a new reminders button. So if we press on it here, we can quickly input a reminder with the new keyboard that's liquid glass and the new interface. We've got the time of course, with the date remind me in an hour and you'll see the interface is all new and it says, remind me when I'm at the current location, arriving home, arriving at work, getting in a car, getting out of the car or custom, and then we can flag it as well. So lots of nice little options here. If you use reminders a lot, you can quickly add it from the control center. Now. Also, we have some additions and shortcuts for reminders as well. So if we go to the library, we'll create a new one. We'll search actions for reminders. And let's type this in properly. And you'll see, of course, we have scripting controls and other device options, but you'll see, as we scroll down, we now have the option for open list. So today scheduled all flagged completed, and you can see all of the other options here for things that have been created before. So we don't have that on iOS 18.6.2 or previous ones. So you can see that here, we do have open list. And if we go into it, it's just not the same thing. So there are some updates throughout that will help you make more reminders or get more out of your reminders and help you make lists a little bit easier or maybe more visually as well. Of course, with iOS 26, we do expect some more integration with reminders and different things throughout the OS with Siri with context, but we don't expect that until sometime next year, according to Apple. So maybe iOS 26.4, and then of course it should integrate more with notes, reminders, maybe other things throughout the OS. So with notes and reminders, that's pretty much everything new. We have a new redesign, some nice updates, some things to make it a little bit more useful and a little bit helpful if you're using math notes. And then of course, reminders with auto categorization and more. Let me know what you use most on your iPhone with the latest updates. Do you use notes? Do you use a different app or do you use reminders or a different app? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.